Well, like I said, this time we're going to try the, the alcohol-based leather dyes, a mixture of those, to uh, do the, the antiquing on these full ivory grips. They're made out of all kinds of different materials, like the ones made to fit an actual single action army Colt's pistol. Uh, has a powdery, grainy look to it, kind of like uh, like real ivory, before it's all polished and pretty and like that. You can look at the part that goes on the inside, not the part that goes on the outside, like that Jack was showing. So that stuff has got to be more porous. Not going quite the way I, the way I thought it would. You kind of learn learn by doing with this stuff. So we'll get to it and we'll we'll figure out just exactly how how this this system works because he didn't really that Jack didn't say a lot. Well, he solves the thing. I'm just trying to show you how to do it yourself. And. Uh, Without further ado, let's hit it. Okay, first off, this is the left side grip, which has this little round indentation there and a little indentation. Right there. In the back strap of a pistol to uh, let you use your thumbnail to pull it off. And apparently, these metals here use two sided tape with one pin that goes in that hole right there to hold it in. So when I put it back together after it's dry, I might just. Uh, a little dot of, dot of um, hot glue in there to hold it and just push that pin back in. C791-M1. That's the code for the medallion, I guess. So now I don't want to do any masking when I go to brush on the leather dye after I mix it up and thin it. Okay, now the right side grip has to be taken out. You have to take these, let me show you here. Two small jeweler screws there, and this uh, Phillips screwdriver from uh, the auto parts counter you clip on your pocket is almost too big. So if you've got a set of jeweler screw, screwdrivers, that would be great. These two little Phillips screws right here. that go in those two holes you see, you see color through. The, the hole in the center is for when you get these grips that have a screw where the medallions are on these, like on my other pistol. That screw goes in that center hole because you're not using these other two. So we've got that out. And here's what it looks like. Let's see if I can show you. That's the little pin on the back of the medallion that I told you goes in that hole there and there's double sided tape on the other side that helps hold it in place. That pin fits pretty snug and I'm going to use a, a drop of hot glue on, on the back of this thing anyway. Just have to be careful where you put it so you're not, if that hole goes all the way through you won't be blocking it and having hot glue running through it. That could be very well. But, We'll get those apart and then I'll tape a pencil inside so you got a, a stick to hold it by. There's nothing on these things to hold. You can easily hold them by without easily flinching and dropping it. And that's where the CO2 cartridge goes and gets pierced up there and pushed down there. You see that screw thing there? This goes in from the outside, like like through there, and you 
crank it around to use this to push it into the piercer to go and you're all set. So that's the way that works. Well, after trying to scrape that double-sided tape out of the little medallion indentations here, I found it's not two-sided tape at all, but it's thinned, thinned out rubber cement. So they just brush a, I guess they brush a little thin coat in there before they press the medallion in. And you can see an indentation there. on both sides for that little part where this, this, this a single screw goes in especially on the right side it goes all the way through so don't put your hot glue in there put a dot or two off to the side or put a dot on the opposite side of the hole from where the pinhole goes so that'll take care of that Anyway, it's a real nice ivory color. It's got a, it's more of a Devonshire cream color. So I think that'll help a little bit when I mix the dyes up and everything. We'll get to that next since I, after I tape a couple pencils to the back side of these things for something to hold on to. Okay. Some painter's tape. And a pair of scissors, I got a couple of pencils, and we got it done. At least now, got something to hold on to while we while we wipe on the uh, the dye here in a minute. Sure, hope this works. The way I've seen uh, Batjack do it from uh, Arizona Ghost Riders. He's got his own channel. He does radio and everything. And, he only briefly, he doesn't give you the ratios, he just tells you oh, some of this and a little less of this and even less of that and and all this sort of thing. And I, I watched three or four, maybe five of his videos and I put enough of it together to figure it out. So, we'll find out in a minute. Okay. So we got our pencils taped on. For handles, my son and I searched all over the place on the internet, locally and locally and otherwise. And he, at Walgreens, he finally found one quart of 70% isopropyl alcohol. These Phoebe's leather dyes here are alcohol-based, so you need alcohol to thin it with. 91% would have been better, but 70% will do. They make these in oil, too, but I bought the ones with alcohol, like, like Bat Jack used when he was looking for the best stuff to uh, antique faux ivory grips with. So this time, well, last time we uh, used True, true Oil tinted with some number 231 uh, Men Wax gun stock. Uh, oil stain, it's about six drops of that, and that worked out okay. But it takes a week or two to dry, and then this, this is a little, this stuff's a little different. Got to make sure the surface is clean and everything, obviously. After dyeing, remove, dye by rubbing briskly with a soft. No. After dyeing, remove excess surface dye by rubbing with a rubbing briskly with a soft cloth. And I'll have to use a blue paper towel. I don't really have anything else, so we'll see how that works. We've got light brown, orange, and yellow. You know, they'll, be, they'll be added in that order, and each box has one of these swabs in it. But we. Since we're going to be doing pistol grips, with, which isn't that big of an area, Q-tips will be fine. And Bat Jack, 
fill, fill his cup with alcohol all the way up to about there. I'm, I'm not going to thin it down anywhere near that much. Don't need to thin it that much. The more you thin it, the more you got to soak, soak the thing with to, to get the proper tone and all that stuff. Okay, so anyway, here we go with the light brown. Sure, that was stirred up a little bit. Not trying to get that seal off. I'm just going to put your teeth and go for it. Okay. Put that seal back in there and you're going to need... That's the only seal between the lid and the... get any on your fingers like I just did you can use it says you can use rubbing alcohol to clean your hands or tools in the case of my little screwdriver here okay Stuff doesn't pour very good. Mm. I need to get. Oh boy! Okay. Towel. That just makes a hell of a mess trying to pour that out of that bottle. But Jack didn't mention that, folks. <laughs> Makes me wish I had a uh, old glass eyedroppers like we used to use with our chemistry sets. Oops. All right. Oops. Oh, I'm going to dump it all over the place trying to turn something around to wipe it off. And that just sat in there for about 10-15 seconds before I went to wipe it off and that, that soaked into the plastic already. I can see in there. I'm not going to use a lot. I'll just get to quit sticking to my fingers. Okay. You can always keep them in the box. That's just one more little bit of insurance against a leak. Get that back down in there. Okay, now it should be orange. Yeah. Now I got the orange one. put everything back in and all that just to try to open it and do all that stuff. Open it 
always try to open a thing before I remember to go like that. <laughs> It's so weird. You pull the seal off, there's a real thin coat of plastic there, and it's even bulged up a little bit. You know, like the uh, vapors inside have uh, inflated it a little bit. Orange is interesting. It's like uh, like the color of that uh, Midway USA uh, concealed carry gun belt I used that looked a lot like the one John Wayne wore in uh, The Shootist. Okay, now here it comes I'm trying to pour the orange just a, a little bit. careful but I kind of do that. Stuff runs down the side of the bottle almost looks like mercurochrome. Who remembers that? Mercurochrome. Is it like some kind of liquefied chromium crystal mixed with mercury? Doesn't sound like something that would be safely antiseptic. <laughs> okay, now there's light brown and orange. You can look at the plastic there and you can kind of see it's getting a real nice color. I'm looking for an amber color, basically. That's what I'm initially shooting for. Certainly not least, yellow. It's got to have some of that yellow tint to it, I remember that. So you guys, maybe look for Bat Jack's videos on YouTube. Uh, antiquing grips or staining grips or whatever he called it. I'll have to put it, I'll have to put it below the video when I... I'll look up the names of the video so you can cross-reference. And you can see that yellow kind of looks like the same color that stuff they, they smear on you at the hospital before they do surgery. Like when they sew the, the ends of both of my index fingers back on. And just kind of peel slowly and gently. Don't for don't Try to horse the thing too much, it'll tear that, and you need that seal. And if the stuff looks like it's starting to thicken up a little, you can always pour some of that isopropyl alcohol in there to thin it back down to what you know is normal consistency, which is kind of watery with this stuff. This 
poke a couple holes in it and peel that oops and peel that plastic off the top. Okay. A little splitch. Try to get just a little bit of the yellow in there. I could see why Bat Jack was mixing uh, light brown, orange, and yellow. Each color mixed together makes the proper tone. When you're used to seeing what antique uh, ivory or faux ivory grips look like. I'm going to stick that swab back down and I'll save them for when I might need them. Okay, now thin it with a little alcohol. Another seal, what a surprise. I quit drinking and everything, right? And because it weakens your bones at our age. And I fell and broke my hip. I was drinking so much, I was pale and out of breath all the time. I quit smoking and drinking. It's been long enough now to where I actually feel better. I got some color. I'm not huffing and puffing anymore. Ah, even that fumes taste nasty. And when I when I broke the seal. <laughs> Actually, when I was a teenager, we actually got to talking about it and tried a sip of the 70% rubbing alcohol. Oh, my God. That tasted... Try to imagine the absolutely nastiest, lousiest batch of white light and you ever tasted in your life and go a couple notches below that, and that's what this shit tastes like. So, don't do it. Okay, I got that filled up to about half of one of these three ounce cups. Maybe a tad more when you think of how much of those three leather dyes I dumped in. But one of these should, these quarts should last a long time. But like I said, you buy these alcohol based ones and it makes it soak into the plastic. Which is basically what that is. It's not, I don't think it's styrene, but it might be. So, um, let me, I got to take care of this memory card here so I can have enough time left. It's only, I think, got about 26 minutes per load. I don't know why. Okay. Got that done now. Stir it up a little bit. That's looking about right. Okay, now I saw Batjack using the Q tip to spread this stuff on there. Try not to get it down that little circular indentation right there so that uh, I can have some place for the hot glue to stick. I don't know how surface resistant this stuff might make make it so where something else wouldn't stick to it. Not sure. Stuff's not wanting to stick. You see it 
bubbling away and everything. And I'm like, what the hell? Maybe it should have. Cleaned it. Got a surface cleaner degreaser for metal, but not for plastic. Yeah, look at that. That's all blistering right off. It's not even wanting to stick. It just wants to run right off. I don't know what the hell the problem is. That's not working at all. See, it wipes right off. You can kind of see it maybe tinted a little, but not a lot. That's not working. I don't know why it. Because he, he was doing even doing resin casting. It's, it sticks to that just fine, but. It's just not. I don't know. Not really, I just don't know. Okay, let's. Whip down a paper towel here. Says you use their cleaner, like if you're doing it on leather or something, you when it's still wet with the cleaner, you're supposed to put this stuff on when you're doing leather. That's not, not wanting to go on, it wants to just you know bead and run off. Could have been stuck from my hands, you know, lattling, the lattling on your skin. Okay, so I wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol, corner of a paper towel there. And nope, it's blistering off. It wants to run right off. Thought it was gonna work for a minute there, but that's just I don't know. It's it's not working. I just can't understand why that isn't working. I didn't want to have to cut the shine off the thing and then have to find something to coat it with and wait like true oil and waiting all that damn time for it to. So it's not going to work. It's not working at all. It won't soak in. I hate to have to dip it in there and soak the damn thing, but I might just have to make a soaking tank to put that in. It's supposed to wipe the excess off. The, it's, it's not soaking in there. I, I was staying in place long enough to even do that. Wiped it back on again. You can see right up here it's just beating up and, and sheeting away. So I don't know. That's not going to work. I, I was hoping it would, but it won't. It's got to be that stuff that's more like a... I don't know what it is. It's not plastic. It's It's some kind of powdery stuff mixed with resin or something and it looks like ivory um, but you know 
I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. That's not working at all. What a bummer. I spent all that money and paid my son for gas and then go get this alcohol for me. It's not working anyway. Not even a little bit. Well, let me get here. Hold on a second, I want to show you guys something. It does look like it's uh, tinting it a little bit. Because here's the one I was working on, I did it twice. And here's the one I haven't touched yet. You can see there's a difference. So I'm going to have to work on this and uh, see how many times I got to do it to really get the color to soak in. Got plenty there and it don't take much. Like three or four Q-tip folds for, per grip and rub it on there and rub it around a while and then once it starts to sheet off you wipe it off and let it sit and dry but unfinished and tinted. You can see that there's a difference starting to show up. So we'll keep working on it and then we'll, I'll, we'll come, I'll come back and show you. All right experiment number two. I dumped out the last batch and I only added about half, maybe half the amount of alcohol. I think I thinned it too much. Otherwise, I tried to mix it, mix the three colors about the same. And this is after a second coat. That's the first coat that was applied while the rubbing alcohol I cleaned it with was still wet. Not bad. Not good, but not bad. Okay. Let's see what we shall see. It's okay if it's a little dark since uh, it'll be it'll come out lighter on the surface. Dyes seem to work that way. You gotta make it look really dark in the container before you put it on the material you're gonna put it on to try to get the, the tone of color that you're actually looking for. Okay. I just get that to sit long enough, that'll be great. Yeah, it does tip your skin a little bit. But they say you can clean it with rubbing alcohol, so we'll put that to the test too. Got some gun cleaning patches there I can soak with alcohol to clean my thinners with. Okay, it's not running, it's not beating up and running off quite as fast. But it still is. This stuff is just just not wanting to stay in place long enough to soak in. You do have to rub the excess off, but I'm just not getting this stuff to perform. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get that tinted very dark. It's just not wanting to work. Not much 
sheet off so we try to wipe off the excess. Okay. There's the third coat with the, the thicker uh, mixture. A little better. And there's the thinner mixture with one. So we'll continue on with the thicker mixture and as long as it holds up and out as the alcohol evaporates, so much the better, I think. What do you say? That's starting to look pretty good though, the one on the right. That's the left side grip. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but it stays nice and shiny too. Let this stuff dry. I don't. I don't think it says on the box how long this stuff's supposed to dry. Just do it the way I told. Why I've been showing you. You know, you wipe off the excess with a soft, brisk, briskly, with a soft cloth. I wouldn't wipe too briskly on this plastic. It's not that porous. Nice though. I think it's looking pretty good, except for where it drips around. It gathers on the edges, and you gotta go get get that off the edge. Okay, this one's had a chance to sit for a while. Let's uh, let's see what we can do on this one. Turn the screen back on, need the light. There we go. Try to do this over here. I don't know how wide the focus is at this point. Oops, kind of missed. Try to get it on there even, but if you're if you looks like you're, it's kind of streaky and patchy like like mine is, don't worry about it because it's it's got to soak in, and you can see it's taking a while to do that. After I do these, I'll let them dry for a while. And um, work on work on editing the video. It's starting to sheet off already. If for nothing else, at least we know you have to uh, not thin it out so much with the alcohol. It needs to be thinned a little bit to get you enough to work with for several coats, but other than that. Okay, let's, time to wipe that one. Let's see what we get. I'm not going to run briskly. I don't care what that bottle says. <laughs> On leather, maybe, but because you got to burnish it a little bit. Okay, try to wipe off the big streaks so they got light, light streaks if you look close enough. Okay. It's starting to look a little, a little better. One on the right there, the left side one that is, is still a little bit darker. <clears throat> but let them sit and dry a bit while I work on the video and we'll see see what happens. Well, the, the, I'm learning how this process actually works. It's really kind of interesting. You use the Q-tip with the, with the solution you make up. 
with the dyes and alcohol only making about a quarter of an inch in the bottom of a three ounce hefty bathroom cup. You brush it onto the Q-tip and when it starts to beat up and sheet off, take the corner of a paper towel or a shop towel that's nice and soft, something like that, and you just wiping it off evenly, not too much. On leather you can rub briskly because it's, it's very porous and it'll soak in really well, but this here, it's, you're kind of working with the off. So lightly wipe it off. Let's sit there in about a minute, it's dry. And look at that shine. Anyway, here, that's about as dark as I can get it. Dark and shiny and beautiful. So, that's what we're looking at. So now, we can take these taped up pencils off of here. Them, but it does seem to make a coloring on the surface anyway when you look at the right slap over to under the tape right there. Well, anyway, it's, it's kind of streaky like real ivory is. That is to say that the, the density of the bone in one little area or another is is lighter, you know, lighter density or higher density, and you get lighter and darker streaks so this stuff the way you rub it you have to rub it on and then wipe it off you kind of make make the streaks and blotches and stuff like in real bone but as easy as I can explain it to you so now I have to see if I can find a glue my glue sticks I got gorilla glue sticks about that long for that hot glue gun. It has two temperature ranges too, but anyway, we'll have to glue these these two medallions back on there. Actually, I want to I want to see how tight that hole is. I'm going to try to push one in. Yep, that comes out pretty easy. I was right. I'm gonna have to have to glue those in. I have to get that set up and wait for it to uh, wait for it to heat up. All right, got the hot glue gun fired up on the low temperature setting. And here's something you gotta you gotta pay attention to. Pinhole on this one is on the left right here. As is this pin right here. Oops, this pin right here. So we'll go on that way as head of the straight up. And on this one, the, the pinhole is at the top. So the pin on when they put the pin on that one is on the top of the medallion behind where it says John. You gotta make sure you get these things in the right spot.
Okay. So now we take this one. Press it in place. Look at the next little spider webs. Hmm. It, won't, it won't go back in now. See, I'm getting the darn pin in there. I just can't push it. Can't to break the damn grip to get the stupid. Oh, I can't get that off of my finger. Come on. That thing must put really freaking tight or something. I can't get that to go in there. It's sticking up right there. I can't get it to go down. That's a pressed in or something. I can't make that go in. I can't. See, this one, the left side went down in there pretty good. The right side is just not wanting to go. There's the, see a little pin right there. We've got to cool off. And we got to... Oh, there's a lot of paper towels trying to keep, the, keep things from making a mess or keep the gun, gun from Scraped up on the glass and metal of the disc. Okay, now I gotta go dig out the, the gun and all the screws in there. Then I can put this together. Okay, now I got the grips back on. I'll have to work on that one. That darn thing is not going to stay in there, but 
anyway there it is Too bad the real single action armies didn't have that safety down there that locks the trigger and the hammer. Why they didn't do that? Because that way they could, they could load all six chambers. But... There we are. Definitely looks better. When you, when you got that, that got the, that, that, using that die on. Here's a couple of better pics where the light's not glaring on it, where you can actually see how dark it is. It looks really good, that, that amber color I was shooting for. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, that's it for this time. It'll look probably fine when I take it off there and hot glue the pin from the other side so it can't move. But good Lord moon, the creeks don't rise, and we'll see you again. So keep your gunwheel and your powder dry.